Anthony, you know, we've talked about uh, John 17 and 3, mm. this mighty, to me, a flagship uh, yes. verse, statement by Jesus and, uh, and brought to us by John, uh, that the Father is the only true God. But I'm thinking about uh, another uh, passage that sort of parallel to that, and that's the uh, John 5.44. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I don't know why people don't pay more attention. Take a, a closer look. Mm -hmm. But uh, talk to us about the John 5.44. Uh, yes, it's a conversation with the Pharisees there. Jesus is constantly saying, as he does in 44, this is John 5.44, how can you believe when you're getting your glory from one another? That's mm -hmm. a great point. And you're not seeking the glory that is from the only God. Monos Theos. Everybody in that day recognized that immediately as being the single God of Israel, the God. I and mean, there's no argument. The that, God with uh, the, the definite article. Yes, <laughs> it is. The, and it's the only God, the only one who is truly God, the one and only, only God. I mean, there's no way that language can say this more clearly. And that's part of their culture. In fact, the amusing thing is, Dan, that were they to switch on our television now, you know, 2,000 years ago, they'd say, well, that's stupid. What are these people talking about? <laughs> we all know who God is, you know. Let's get on something more interesting. Than that. <laughs> but we have to do this because we've, we have strayed from the simplicity of the teaching of Jesus on who God is. So it, does, it just backs up, you know, what you did with 20... Uh, what was that? 31. Yes, 20, 20, 31. The summary of all of this is part of it, that you should believe in the only God and not worry so much about what other human beings are going to uh, think of your theology. So here we are with this word monos again. Exactly. The only, alone, one, right. That's none, right. none else. That's right. And uh, we've got that then in John 17 and 3. Mm -hmm. You, Father, mm -hmm. uh, Jesus mm -hmm. speaking to the Father, you're the only one who is God. You're right. the only true God. Yes. And, uh, and now here we find Jesus uh, also talking about the, to uh, uh, the folks back there uh, you're, you're erring, mm. you seek honor from one another, yes. you're seeking that from one yes. when in reality uh, you should be seeking it from yes. the, that one who is the yes. only true God. The so Father. that's uh, yeah. idolatry, isn't it? Yeah. If, you, if you're seeking honor from other human beings, mm. they have become your God. Mm. Is that right? Mm. And he's saying, why don't you seek honor from the true God and you'll find it, he's saying, in him. Well, I love all that. And then uh, mm -hmm. You have such a great foundation for this monos business, mm -hmm. uh, which is, I suppose, where we get our the the true word mono oh, theism, straight out of the Greek. one God oh, uh, and which we uh, are very firmly uh, mm -hmm. uh, attached to this mm -hmm. one yes. God thing. Yes. We, we just think that uh, uh, when you begin to say that God is multiple persons or personalities, all these ideas then we're actually straying away from that true mono, the only one who's truly God, Jesus identifies as the Father. That's right. We don't think we are because we quickly say, oh, we believe in one God, and we use the monos word, it's the only God, but we then, under our breath, hearing, hoping that we don't even hear what we're thinking ourselves, yeah. some say, well, we mean three or two. Yeah, right. yeah. Uh, so we give with one hand yeah. and take it back with the other, which is really the essence of confusion and lying. We don't need, I think, to be confused on this issue, that the Father is the only one, or monos, the only genuine God. You know, Alithinos in Greek means the only real, authentic, oh. <laughs> genuine God. Guess what? All the rest of them are fakes and phonies. Right. So where does this put the human race? If we get this wrong, our church going is likely to be less than first class. We know that Jesus himself is not that only true God because he has said the Father is the only true God. Yes. And he places himself as the Christ uh, the, in that statement. Right. Uh, he's the Christ. The, uh, That's the, right. Uh, so I, I think a lot of times, too, about the foundation behind uh, these kinds of statements, the, the Old Testament foundation, mm -hmm. things, the Isaiah mm -hmm. kinds of things. Where that we're talking about the only one who is God, uh, He alone is God. All yeah. that amazing. Yeah. That had to be a foundation, wouldn't you think? Oh, absolutely. Behind uh, these, the Jewish listeners. Oh, here, absolutely. Jesus Himself, who was uh, also a yes. a Jew and knew the Scriptures in Isaiah. Wow. Yes. Oh, there's no question about that. And then on the other side of that argument, or parallel to it is the fact that the Messiah is presented as one being raised up from the family of Israel, like Moses. Mm. Nobody's thinking of a second member of a Godhead come to earth. Mm -hmm. A virgin will conceive, and unto us a son is being begotten. I'm going to start using that word begotten there. Mm -hmm. 
this gives us the clear outline and portrait of who the Messiah is going to be. And to turn around and say, well, he after all was the second member of a Godhead who stepped down out of heaven and became a man, is pretty bad stuff. Mm -hmm. It throws away the 75% of our Bible, which is the Hebrew Bible. Wow. So if I'm uh, reading then John 5.44, mm -hmm. I would think I would want to read it in light of John 17 and 3. Very much so. Uh, yeah. John uh, 20, 31. Definitely. And then all those wonderful uh, statements in Isaiah. Absolutely. For example, other Absolutely. places. Yes. That there is only one yes. who is God. Yes. Uh, agrees perfectly with Jesus yes. and John. Well, great. I love this. Uh, John 5, 44. Wonderful. Yes. John Back 17 and 73. 3. 20, 31. Great stuff. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for all those thoughts. That's wonderful stuff.